I'm sure people are staying away because they don't want to get wet and they're tired from Saturday. So all of you who um, were at the march, stand up. Who was at the march? Protest of the march. Okay. For all of you so I've been going to marches on the mall for about 40 years and this was by far the largest, most awesome march I've been to, bar none. Well, except for Obama's um, first inaugural, which was 1.1 million people on the mall. I'm telling you. We counted each one, so take that, you know who. Okay. We need to adopt the agenda. Do I have a motion to adopt it, the agenda? Green to turn, Board of Directors, to have moved the adoption of the agenda with flexibility. Can't hear you. Thank you, Board of Directors. Thank you. All those in favor? Yes, ma'am. You have an addition? If it's not on here, then we're not doing them. That's an excellent question. And because it does, it's not happening today, we are going to have a problem and we're going to have to deal with it. Okay, all those in favor of adopting the agenda with flexibility, put your hands up. All those opposed. Okay. The approval of the minutes for November 28th. Do I have a motion? Anybody? I move the adoption of the minutes. You're going to take that mic with you? <laughs> Bring your bill of board of directors, second. Okay, all those in favor of approving the minutes for November 28th, raise your hands or your cards. All those opposed? All those abstaining? Good. All right, we're now going to have candidates for MSEA elections. So I hope they're listening. Each candidate is going to get three minutes. Donna over here in the front is going to keep track of time and she will put up a sign that says one minute when you have one minute left. And if you go over the three minutes, I have a button here and there's a little trap door right under me and you will disappear and be spewed out onto the street. So we're going to start the speakers with the list that I have right here. If somebody hasn't signed in, you need to come up to the front. Hello. Okay. We've got <coughs> Bill Rainey from Charles County running for MSCA director. Come on up. All right, thank you, Yvonne. I'm Bill Ramey, Charles County, 24 years in education. Ocean City, MSCA Convention. Plaques and trophies, what do they celebrate? They celebrate the locals, have the most people given the pack. They celebrate the locals that have the highest membership rates. They celebrate the locals that have the biggest membership gains. They don't celebrate the locals that have their members on stem. They don't celebrate the locals that get colas for their members. Very well. 
comes down to EACC, Education Association of Charles County, to our exec board meeting. I'm on the exec board, Charles County. In December, what is her concern? Membership and the possibility of the negative effects of a certain orange haired individual on our association. Not once did she ask about were our members on step? Not once did she ask them the last time we got a COLA. This gets directly to member well-being, and I think MSEA is letting us down. That's why I am running to be on the board of directors of MSEA. We're two steps behind. We haven't had a COLA since they stopped making tab down there in Charles County. I kid you not. So. That's all I've got to say. Thank you very much. My name is Bill Ramey, Charles County. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we came under the time. We don't have to do that. Okay. Joe Coughlin, Baltimore County, running for MSCA Treasurer. Come on up. Thanks, Yvonne. Hello, Prince George County Educators, Educators Association, and thank you for the opportunity to speak with you this evening. My name is Joe Coughlin, and I'm running for MSEA Treasurer. I came to education 16 years ago, and I'm a computer technician responsible for network and desktop support for students, teachers, and staff in Baltimore County Public Schools. During this time, I've been active in my local, the education support professionals of Baltimore County, working on the budget, negotiations, membership, and government relations committee, amongst others. I've served two terms as president, where we negotiated step and cost of living increases equaling the four to six percent the last five years, and have negotiated a two percent COLA for the next three years. We've been able to manage our resources to create and and implement professional development for our members, create and maintain our website, and maintain the resources that fulfill the mission of ESBBC. Thanks to your support, I am serving my second term as a member of MSCA's Board of Directors, fighting attacks on public education on behalf of our 72,000 members. I am a member of the Budget, Crisis Fund, Leadership Development, and State Contacts Committee all of which have supported MSEA to be the leader in education initiatives and reforms. I'm a graduate of MSEA's Emerging Leaders Generation 5 and NEA's ESD Leaders for Tomorrow programs. I believe these programs have given me valuable tools that will be important to have as treasurer. It is my call to work with our locals to maintain and ultimately grow our membership. I am determined to continue the fight with our enemies who want to do away with agency fee and are slowly letting privatization creep into our schools and offices to replace us with unemployment and an, un try that again, an unqualified workforce. <clears throat> I believe it's time to re-examine the base salaries of our educators throughout the state and promote a fair and living wage that will support our families. I also want to help locals in obtaining all grants that are available to them in order to show how grants can be used to strengthen their organization. This year I've been shadowing our current treasurer. In doing so, I have a better understanding of the fiduciary responsibilities of this position and will make my, and will make my transition to oversee MSEA's resources smoother and ensure strong financial support of MSEA's advocacy and organizational goals. I'm asking for your vote to ensure our budgets grows MSCA's leadership role in education by advocating and organizing on issues, on issues important to our members and students. Thank you very much. Any questions for me? Thank you. Okay, next we've got Doug Lea. For NEA director from Howard County, come on up. Good afternoon. Thanks, uh, Ivana. Thanks to all of you for your time on this beautiful Monday afternoon. Um, 
And my name is Doug Lang. For those who don't know me, I'm a board certified teacher and a career educator from Howard County. Um, I'm currently serving as your senior NEA director from the state of Maryland. Um, I would like to thank you for your support in the past and um, that put me in that seat. And to ask for your vote one last time, because you can have two terms on the NEA board, and it takes a while to really become effective there, and I feel like I'm running at full speed. So in general, I think two terms is a, a good idea for pretty much anybody. Um, so I'm right in the middle of some really amazing work, and I want to keep going. So as an example, um, I chaired the NEA Professional Standards and Practice Committee, and I wrote a recommendation calling for regional training hubs. And the idea of member-led trainings and owning the profession is really starting to take hold. That's an expensive proposition. Um, but very recently, I'm really excited because I was elected by the NEA board itself to represent them on a very small committee that allocates $6 million annually to states and locals um, with the idea of increasing state, local, and member affiliate capacities in ways that will really truly impact teaching and learning. Um, so I'm really, like I said, I'm just right in the middle of that, I want to keep going. Uh, a couple things. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we were all excited that we, that we passed ESSA and got rid of No Child. We're working really hard to make that a reality. Um, whether or not you went to one of the listening sessions, you can still go on the MSDE, MSDE website and um, put some information in there and have your voice added to this conversation. The more you do that, the easier it is for those of us at MSEA to advocate for a plan that makes sense. Um, I can barely speak about the Education Secretary nomination. <laughs> the good news is um, that Senator Van Hollen has stated publicly that he will vote no on that one. Yes! Um, we are. And Senator Cardin is leaning that way, but has not said definitively to my knowledge. He did. he did. Awesome. So call other Republican senators and any other senator in the country. No to DeVos, of course. So, so I'll wrap it up here. Um, it's really been an honor to represent you on the board. Um, apart from teaching, I feel like it's really perhaps the most important work I'm going to do in my career. So um, again, my name is Doug Lay. I hope you'll take a, a flyer, post it up, talk me up. Um, you can catch me on Facebook. My uh, email's on the MSEA website, so if you have any questions you want to get in touch with me, um, I'd love to hear from you. And I'm happy to stand for questions if that's allowed. Uh -oh. Thank you. And now someone that we've never met before. Uh, Donna Christie running for MSCA director. <laughs> um, Y'all know I don't need three minutes. <laughs> so y'all should know me by now. Donna Christie, I'm running for MSCA board of directors. I'm, I'm, and I, you know what, I'm actually running because I was asked. And I was raised that if you're called to serve, you serve. So I was asked to run, so I'm running. Um, I, I do a lot. Um, I am on the board of directors here. I am on the NEA Resolutions Committee. I've been on, I'm on the MSEA Bylaws and Rules Committee. I've done Emerging Leaders Academy. I'm generation 11. Uh, what else? I'm on pretty much every committee here. I'm not gonna try to list them all. Historic practices, special ed, bylaws, GR, PR, whatever. It's all good. People ask me, uh, what do you do for fun? Anybody on online dating? Anybody do online dating? <laughs> Very first question you get asked, you know, is what do you like to do for fun? Yeah, I say go to union stuff. <laughs> go to Annapolis and talk to my legislators. Go to Capitol Hill, that's my favorite one. Go to Capitol Hill, walk into my legislator's office, which is Dutch, Ru Dutch Ruppersberger. He's on the House Appropriations Committee. Have no problem walking into his office and sitting down talking to his staff. Those of you who follow me on Facebook know I am relentless. That's Doug's word for me. Uh, I think I've converted four Trump uh, supporters this week. 
Like, Y'all think it's crazy. I even had one. I, I posted that I won the debate and he liked it. He, he admitted that I won the debate with him on Facebook. Because uh, <laughs> I, I won't let it go. I, I fight day in, day out, working out a PhD in public policy because I feel like you need to know what you're talking about. I understand the finance between public education policy. I understand the politics behind it. I understand how you make things happen politically and in policy and in decision. And it's not all with your legislators. A lot of it's happening with your, your bureaucrats in the Department of Education. If there's a chance to speak to a group, I take it. Parent group, parent advocacy group, I'll go. And this DE listening to her, I'm there. I'm there working for you day in and day out. So you can know that if you vote for me, I will be there working for you. Thanks. Okay, Donna also doesn't have to go down the trap door. Next speaker, Michelle Alexander for MSCA Board of Directors from Montgomery County. Come on up. Good afternoon. Well, I, I want you first of all to notice that um, I'm wearing your colors because uh, at one time I actually was a member of PGCEA. Um, actually, when I uh, went to law school and then worked for the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights, I found that I missed working with children and literally skipped away from the, uh, the office so I'm doing FOIA requests and came and uh, taught at Kenmore Middle School. And so actually some of my early attending of NEA conventions was as a member of PGCEA, so uh, kind of feel like I'm at home. I am currently a library media specialist at Richard Montgomery High School in uh, Montgomery County. And I'm running for re-election to the MSCA Board of Directors. You all might have remembered that um, I won uh, as the minority seat at the RA in October, and I'm sure you're kind of like, well, you're back again. It was, for, it was for one year, and I really just gotten started. So the election, as you know, is on the 30th, and I get three more years. So I'm really asking for your support to continue for three more years. So what have I been doing in the time period I've been there? Um, talking about ESSA, looking for its implementation. Um, being at different local events. Uh, last week I actually uh, attended the swearing in of members of the Howard County NAACP and got to hear um, Congressman, you know, Paul, uh, Paul Sarbanes talk about, you know, ways we can work together. So I'm, I'm all over the state because that's kind of what I do, even though I work in Montgomery and I live in Howard and I hang out here all the time. But the thing is that I really want your support. As an attorney, I work for the uh, U.S. Commission on Civil Rights. I've done family law. I also used to work prior to that as a member of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference under Reverend Dr. Joseph Lowry. So I was really excited about the march. Uh, I remember what it's like dodging, going to jail, you know, and protesting. And so I just ask for your support. If you have any questions for me, please ask me. But I just, I need more time. I've got my claws into some things, and I want to keep it going. Thank you, and have a great day. And now we've got somebody from Prince George's County. <clears throat> Uh, shouldn't be speaking because he's running for PGCA board. That'll be another time, another day. Erica Strauss Chavaria for NEA director from Howard County. Hi everyone. My name is Erica Strauss Chavaria and I am running for NEA director. 
I'm a proud high school Spanish teacher in Howard County, and I currently serve on the MSEA Human and Civil Rights Committee, the HCEA Board of Directors. I'm also chair of the HCEA Organizing Committee and a member of the HCEA Minority Affairs Committee and Government Relations Committee. Um, I'm also a certified practitioner and trainer of restorative practices, something that I care very deeply about. Last year I served on an NEA task force on the school to prison pipeline and school discipline, which created policy to address issues of systemic racism, racial disparities in discipline, and the pushing out of mainly students of color into the prison system. I teach at a school that has a low socioeconomic, majority minority, high free and reduced lunch population. I've seen all of my students suffer from the burdens of high stakes testing. I've seen the harsh impacts that poverty places on my students. I've seen the inexcusable inequities of resources and services that deprive our students of the quality and just education they deserve. I've seen our profession disrespected while demands put on us increase, or the demands that are put on us increase daily. NEA directors are responsible for the creation of and adherence to the general policies and interests of the association. NEA directors also serve on their state board of directors and in doing so give a voice to the issues and priorities of their respective states. They are leaders in the decision-making process of NEA in order to serve all of our educators and students in the nation and advance the organization's vision and mission. I'm running for NEA director to support and defend all children regardless of color, orientation, gender identity, ability level, religion, or zip code. I'm running to ensure that our educators are treated with the respect and dignity that they deserve. As NEA director, I will work tirelessly to ensure that NEA is standing by its commitment to combat systemic and institutional racism, end the school to prison pipeline, and push for the implementation of alternative discipline strategies like restorative practices. I will advocate for NEA to form coalitions and collaborate with organizations that are already active in the fight against racial, social, and educational injustice. I will work to ensure that NEA provides states and locals with the resources and trainings necessary to equip educators with the tools that they need to confront all of the challenges that we face in our schools and our classrooms. I will advocate for federal and state policies and legislation that tackle inequities in funding and shrinking education budgets. And I can assure you without a doubt that as NEA director, I will fight tooth and nail to protect public education against a completely unqualified incoming Secretary of Education who threatens to dismantle our unions, eliminate our jobs, and ultimately destroy public, public education while replacing it with private schools, private charters, and voucher systems. Today I want to stress the importance of voting because although the gap between NEA and our locals is wide, seems wide, the decisions made at the national level do affect state and local associations. As NEA director, I promise to advocate for you both at the state and national level. And I also promise to protect us from grizzlies. And that would be one of my top priorities. Um, again, my name is Erica Strauss Chavarria, and I humbly ask for your vote for NEA director. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Our next speaker is Gary Brennan from Frederick County for MSEA Treasurer. Thank you, Iman, and good afternoon, Prince George's County educators. Uh, my name is Gary Brennan. I am a teacher in Frederick County, and just so you know how committed I am to be here. When I left Frederick today, there was a terrible ice storm happening. There were cars all over the roads. I was a little worried I was going to have to turn around, and I, as I was driving, did what I shouldn't, and I called and said, is your uh, rep assembly still on? And I was told yes, so I forged ahead, and I'm glad to be here, literally glad to be here uh, tonight. Uh, if you look at my sheet, I have a long... Uh, history of involvement in the union. I'm a 31-year educator, 31-year member of MSEA, NEA, and my local. I have lots of experience at all levels of our association, whether it's leading my local as the president of FCTA, the Teachers Association of Frederick County for 10 years, or serving on the MSEA and NEA boards. I currently serve uh, as the chair of MSEA's legislative committee. Uh, so I have been committed in all levels and all areas, but I don't really want to talk uh, about my past experiences, I really am most concerned about the present and the future. Uh, we are, as educators, always seem to be in challenging times. I think they're kind of uniquely challenging right now. We have both a state governor uh, and an incoming administration at the federal level who I don't think have our students or educators' best interests in mind. But at the same time we're living in challenges, I think we see incredible opportunity. I was felt so uh, empowered 
this weekend with what happened in this country. The march in Washington, the march in Chicago, the march in Philadelphia, New York, in Frederick County. Over a thousand people marched in downtown Frederick County to support the values that I think all of us as educators have. Fairness, equality, looking out for others, helping move this country forward, not backwards, and ensuring that every child has a great education. I want to be treasurer of MSEA because that's my vision. The two most constant things in my life from the time I was a child were public education, which quite literally saved my life as a child, and unionism. As soon as my first job in a supermarket, I joined the union, and I've been in a union ever since I was 17 years old. I care about these two things deeply. I want to make sure that MSEA's budget reflects the values of every local, Prince George's County, Frederick County, Montgomery County, the Eastern Shore. I want to hear and reach out to locals across this state to make sure that we have a budget. And I also want to make sure as treasurer, I'm doing everything we can to increase our membership, to learn what's happened in this county, to turn fee payers into members. You guys have done an incredible job. To see some of the things that I learned in Frederick that allowed us to have 90% membership without agency fee. So that's what I want to do as treasurer. I hope you support me, and please get the members in your buildings to vote. We have to support our union democracy as well as our United States democracy. Thank you. Oh, Gary, I was about to push the button. <laughs> okay, our next speaker, Linda McLaughlin for MSCA board from Charles County. Come on up. Georges, how are you? I am really happy to be here. I was caught in the traffic out on the Beltway trying to get to you, and I was thinking, oh my goodness, I'm not going to get there. They're going to be done before I get there. So um, I didn't have to go against any ice like Gary did, but the rain and the traffic was also a little bit stressful. So I am running for the MSCA Board of Directors. I have been in education, it seems like, my entire life. My father was a professor, and he actually um, taught about test and tests and measurement, and before you all boo me off the stage here, he was the one that said, we have to have good tests. We have to have good tests for our students, and when I would talk to him about the over-testing of our students across the state, the first question out of his mouth was, what are you going to do about it? Okay, so we did a time to learn, um, a time to learn committee in Charles County. I was very active in that. We had a big town hall. We got lots of parents out. We got people involved. And I want to be the voice that comes from all over Maryland about the overtesting of our students because we do too much testing for these poor kids. They're not having enough time to learn because we're just testing them to death. One of the other things that I'm, it's very important to me is teacher empowerment. We have lost a lot of the joy that comes from being in charge of our professions. We were hired to be the experts in the room. That's why we were hired, but then we're not treated that way. So that's something that's very important to me as well. Something else that's very important to me is the eradication of institutional racism. We see it all across our nation, all across our schools, and it has to start with us. We have to, if it doesn't start with us, it has to start somewhere. So that's one of the things that's very, very important to me as well. I actually began teaching in the state of North Carolina, which if any of you have come from North Carolina, you know that there's no collective bargaining rights there, and it is, and other duties as assigned. And if you do not sell tickets at the basketball game, that shows up on your evaluation at the end of the year. And it is, I, am, I was so happy when I moved to Maryland, I'm like, where do I sign up? We have to make our voices heard, and I would like to help be that voice for Southern Maryland, Prince George's County, anywhere that anybody has any concerns on the MSCA board. The other thing that I'm very, very interested in right now, and this is something that Prince George's County has helped us with a tremendous amount, is restorative practices. Thanks to Ms. Robin McNair um, and some heavy, heavy pushes with our Board of Ed, we are this close to getting all the training we need. We are this close, and it's because of you guys and because of your support and because of the example that you guys set, because I took it to my superintendent and I said, Prince George's County is doing it and it's working for them. Are you gonna let us be second to Prince George's County? We need to catch up. 
And she was like, oh, oh. So um, thank you guys for that, that was pretty awesome. But I put my flyer in the back. Please vote for me, Linda McLaughlin. For MSCA Board of Directors, I would like to be your voice. Thank you. Okay, and now we have uh, Doug Prouty. He is the former president of Montgomery County, and he would like to speak to you about the State Pension Board and his seat on it. Hi folks, how you doing? Good, I won't take long. Um, I, there's an open seat on the State Pension System Board of Trustees, uh, and we need an education representative on it, um, so I'm running for that seat. What I'm going to do in half a second is bring these around to you. I need signatures to get my name on that, um, uh, um, to be nominated for that so that I can get elected, hopefully, in this coming spring, and all of you will be able to vote for me. Everyone in the system who, uh, who is invested in the system will be able to vote. Um, I don't know about you, but I know I'm counting on my pension, because if not, I'll be working until they call me out of there in a stretcher. So what I, my goals in terms of being on the state pension board are these, to make sure that the investments are sound, to make sure that the system is restored to where it should be, it's on its way back, but it's not there yet, and to make sure that we have in mind, while we are considering the investments, social justice, because the investments that we make for the pension board need to be sound, but they also need to be ones we can be proud of as well. So those will be my priorities. Uh, if I get elected to the state pension board, I'll bring these clipboards around to you. I just need a signature. If you sign the convention, you can't sign again. You can only do it once. In this past election, I would like to have voted one more than once. I'll tell you that much. But um, I'll bring these around. I appreciate your support. And then when the election happens this coming spring, I'd appreciate support then as well. It's Doug Prouty of Montgomery County, my 23rd 20, 20, year in public education. Um, I'm going to fight for you on the pension board, and I appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Okay, that ends our speeches. And we would like is, uh, let's see, we need to call in somebody from the NECC. Can somebody go out? Cheryl? We need to have somebody come and explain the MSCA elections process. Our beloved chair, Mac. No, okay. Oh, oh, okay. So, um, am I am I just discussing the MSCA elections right yes. now? Okay. So, MSCA voting will begin January thirtieth. Um, we need you to look. For an email from MSCA. If you do not receive an email, please log on to MarylandEducators.org and you can search for the 2017 election and it'll bring you to the page. You will need your MSCA number, I believe, yeah, to um, in order to log in to um, complete your ballot. And if you don't have it, you can either call here or you can log on to your PGCEA website and log in there and your MSCA number will be there, will be located there. And I did not write down the closing date. It's January 30th. It's four, I believe it's four weeks. Yes. It's four weeks. So four weeks from the 30th. Okay, thank you. Okay, the um, exact dates for the MSCA election are January 30th to through February 24th. So just look for that email. If you don't get it, call up MSCA.
Okay, folks, we're going to uh, try something right now for about maybe five minutes, maybe four. On the back, there are two sheets of paper. One has the committee members who will be voting on Ms. DeVos, and the other one is a paper that has their phone numbers, but also how much money they got from her for their elections. Now, some people are already saying that the members on that committee who got money from her should recuse themselves and should not be voting on it. But we don't know, you know, things are so funny in Washington these days. Uh, we've got alternative facts. So, you know, you never know what's going to come out in the news. We here do not believe in alternative facts. We believe in the truth, always and forever. So, take out your cell phones, and if you've got that piece of paper, we want you to call one person, one person on that list. And of course you won't get through because it's late. Leave a message that you are opposed to her because she knows nothing about public education. That's the message. So we're going to give you uh, three minutes. Take those sheets back to your buildings. Make copies for all your members if you can, and ask them to make one phone call, maybe each day next week or this week, one phone call to one of those members. If you don't get through, leave a message. Yeah, don't use the PGCPS email to email your colleagues, okay? If you have their personal emails, use those. All right, what we need right now is our own members, PGCA members who are running for the regional positions as delegates to the NEA convention. Do we have anybody here who's running for a regional position? Stand up. Okay, you see familiar names on the ballots, vote for them. Okay, yeah. Folks, I love you, you have to go. <laughs> I have extra cards, take them. Okay. Share them with your friends. Take a sandwich. Okay, do we have any motions dealing with the speakers that you heard today. <laughs> Can't hear you.
Can we turn the mic off in the in the hall? It's a bit off. It's off. It's off. Okay. Uh, we're asking the candidates to please leave the room. to be here today. Um, many of you know um, that I had surgery back in December and for the record the doctor said they got it all that um, I don't need any chemo or radiation and he'll see me in six months. So Donald Trump and Mr. Boss watch out because I'm here with a vengeance. Um, and I want to thank everybody for the support and love that you showed me, your emails, your texts, your cards. Um, it really meant a lot to me to know that um, my family was with me when I went through my surgery. And I want to specifically thank, um, uh, where is she, Virginia McLaughlin, who, um, as I laid in a drunken stupor from the medications, at the, after my surgery brought me this little button and you push it and it says you're a bad A. So I'm going to keep that with me as I move forward. Um, Tawana Lane's treasurer's report I believe is in the back. Um, and um, Charles Burt um, is not here. Um, he was ill today and the bylaws amendments will be going out um, tomorrow to all of the members. Um, the committee met over the um, over our hiatus and made that determination. Um, Sarah Lale, government relations. She has to leave. She has to leave. Does someone give her report? Yes. Step to the mic over here in the front so people can see you, please. I'd like committee chairs to give their reports from up here because the side mics are kind of hard for people to There it is. Okay. Sarah Lale wanted me to remind everybody who didn't already know the legislative breakfast was postponed from the 7th of this month and will be taking place Saturday the 28th. Because of the postponement due to whether we went with the PGCPS calendar and they canceled all activities that Saturday. So even though it wasn't the worst storm in the world, that's what we were going by. Um, the 28th, unfortunately because of the new date, there are a number of volunteers who have not responded saying that they're going to be able to show up. So we do need volunteers to be there at 7.30 on Saturday at the Greenbelt Marriott. That's the one on Ivy Lane, um, right off of 201. It's very easy to get to. And the legislative breakfast itself will be beginning at 8.30, thank you. Um, and anybody who is willing to volunteer or who is interested in coming, because I don't believe all, Sarah told me all the slots were no longer filled because of the rescheduling. Please email Jamal Miller, jmiller at pgcea.org. He's in my email, so I, I know that one well. Um, please come out. We need your support. We need to show the legislators that we care about our issues. There's going to be an ESSA training for them that morning um, as the reauthorization 
or the authorization with the state is still going forward if you were in any of those sessions. So it is very important that we are there. We represent the teachers. We represent the other educators, everybody. We need to get our stories, our personal stories to them because we can sit there and talk on talking points till we're blue in the face and we're going to do that too. But if you can't put a face and a name behind that point, it's not gonna make a bit of difference. Please come out and support all of us. She needs volunteers for registration and, and some of the setting up, most of the setting up's being done by the hotel. So it's just a few touches that need to be put on that morning. Please come out and help. Thank you, and I think we have a motion to be made for GR coming to microphone two. Thank you, Ms. Washington. Or my peers, that's fine. Yes, I'd like to make a motion um, that we support the repeal of the current section 3-1002 of the education article, which is formerly known as House Bill 1107 from 2013, um, which basically um, is opposing the takeover of local school boards. Um, do I have okay. a second? Can, we, can I get a second? The Shore Redmond Friendly High School seconds. Would you like to speak to the motion, Ms. Washington? Um, sure, I, um, I've spoken about this a couple times and I know that the state um, at our last state convention supported this uh, bill, but I think that it's really important considering that the legislative breakfast is coming up and it'll give us an opportunity to speak with legislators. Um, basically, as teachers, as educators, as residents of Prince George's County, our vote should count. We should be able to vote for the, the people that represent us. Um, and currently, the, the, um, the law allows, these, um, it allows too much um, outside influence in our school system. So the board, um, the CEO has the power to nominate um, anybody to his leadership team. So currently there are 33 members of the CEO's leadership team. He can set their salaries. Um, he can close schools. He has so much power that doesn't have to go through the, the Board of Education, the members that we elect. And so it, it essentially makes their power a little bit less um, of an influence and, and it, there's less accountability to the, um, to the constituents that they represent. If they're not able to represent us by their vote because the CEO has all of this power, then what does our vote mean? And are we really making decisions that um, are to the best benefit of our students and our children who go to school in the system. Um, so. I, uh, if, if I could, uh, Ms. Washington, I'd like to add a couple of clarifying yeah. points. Um, <clears throat> PGCEA opposed um, HB 1107 when it was originally proposed. Um, there was a lot of members, you know, several members of other labor groups that were in favor of it because they just didn't like the, the CEO, the superintendent at the time. We, I have met with the other labor groups um, last week. Um, Jamal and I met with, um, and Randy, and the, the real issues that are sparking um, a lot of consternation are number one, this legislation enabled the county executive to choose our CEO and a superintendent. And a CEO has different powers than a superintendent. Um, the CEO was chosen by, um, by, by the um, county executive and he has powers that exceed what a lot of other boards powers are. For example, in order to overturn something that the CEO sets up, instead of having a 50% majority, they need a two thirds. And it's problematic because you have um, appointees that are beholden to the county executive because he appoints them. We also have a, there was a, there's an issue with, like I said, whether it's a CEO or a superintendent, and they also get to appoint this, the, the county executive also appoints the chair and the vice chair of the school board. So it's a lot of power 
that even when there's problems or issues, the school board doesn't have the power to even replace a CEO. It all comes from the county executive, so there's no checks and balances. Now, the other labor unions have asked PGCEA to sign on to a letter opposing this. And this is something that's going to go out this week. And in order to take that position, I would like to have the support of the rep council in order to do that. Oh, no, what I say? You said opposing. No, opposing the legislation, but um, in favor of the repeal. Carolyn Howard and Anthony Muse have introduced legislation to do that. Um, by um, supporting the repeal, it will, even if we can't get all of it done, the whole repeal done, it would allow us to have the time to negotiate what are we going to go back to and how will that, how will it be different in Prince George's County for the, be the betterment of our students. So that's the information that I have. Um, and I, I do want to work with our labor brethren on this issue and be able to work as a collective voice. So that's what I have to say. The microphone is black. The delegation has now set up an education subcommittee. Um, they never had a subcommittee. It was a county affairs committee. Um, Delegate Jay Walker has set up a special committee um, not a special committee, but a separate committee specifically around educational issues. So they have, they're working on um, their draft of what it is that they think that it should look like. Um, and legislation is kind of like sausage. You know, you might not want to see it made. So um, it will go from the county delegation, because um, this is a county specific bill, then it would go to the regular general assessment, the education committee for the um, state, and then it would go to the floor of the House and the Senate. So that would be the stratosphere that this would take. Okay, so you said the education subcommittee, and so the education subcommittee is with, from the uh, county council? County, Prince George's County delegate delegation. The House of Delegates, Prince George's County has their own delegation. Right. And our delegation now has a specific education committee. They voted on it um, about a month ago. And so now all education issues facing Prince George's County will go through that committee. Okay. And then who's on the committee? Um, I can give you that information. It'll be posted on our website. Um, it'll be posted and you'll get that information. Okay. Thank you. okay. It's on the Prince George's County Delegation website. Yes. Robin McNair, Board of Directors. So if I'm hearing you correctly, you're saying that a special education committee has been put together to actually draft the, the bill and what's going to be in the bill and the provisions in the bill? No. Okay. What has happened, there already has been legislation drafted okay. that Carolyn Howard and, and is introducing in the House of Delegates and Anthony Muse is introducing in the Senate. So the bill is complete, because when I went to the hearing at the Sports and Learning Center, it wasn't complete. It wasn't complete. So it is complete, is complete now. now, and the bills have been filed. OK, thank you. Yes, from what I understand, they have been filed. Yes. Yvonne Basich. So this is the same group of people who put forward the legislation in the first place and who voted for it and foisted it upon us. So do we know how the delegation feels about this legislation, the new legislation? Well, that's where we have to get on the agenda of the legislators. And over the next couple of weeks, I will be meeting, and uh, Jamal and Randy and I will be meeting, and anybody else who wants to be meeting with us on Monday nights to lobby our elected officials about the repeal. Um, they have to hear from us. Our legislative breakfast. And we have a legislative breakfast on Saturday. Okay, well, and they will all be there on Saturday. At that legislative breakfast, this has to be a big issue. And somebody has to speak to it at the mic. I think I might. 
I would love the support of my assembled group here. Yes, ma'am. I would like to speak in support of, of Sheena's motion, Michelle Clark, Board of Directors. Um, I recall the fight in the beginning when we went to try and block this legislation from going through. Um, Ken actually came out to my community association meeting to try and get signatures, and I circulated a whole ton of petitions. So I know this was bad legislation from the beginning. The legislation that finally got passed was even worse than what they had originally shown us. And the power that sits in the CEO's hands to close schools without the approval of the board is absolutely ludicrous, among other things. But that power is too much. And in addition, as Teresa said, the county executive gets to appoint three members to the school board and the county council one. So that's four additional members making that two-thirds majority virtually impossible to get if at least one person is behoven to him or behoven to in any way shape or form so and if you look at it he gets to appoint the chair and the vice chair only one of which has to be an elected person the other one can be appointed in this case the chair is appointed and the vice chair is elected an elected official but still again she's behooven to him because he put her in that position it makes it almost impossible for things to get done we really need to support this repeal legislation like Teresa said there are other issues as to how the board's going to look in the future but the powers that that are there now are not acceptable it's not good for us I would love to see the numbers on administrative leave prior to this and after it also because that seems to be a big issue for us. Microphone two. I don't think it's working. Ellen's not working. Is it on? <laughs> I mean, I picked up, but it's still on. It's still on. It's trying to do it. All right. All right. Um, I know there was a question about the Education Subcommittee. So I was just going to read off a little bit. The chair is Delegate Geraldine Valentino Smith. Vice Chair is Delegate Dara Barnes. There are four members Delegates Juana Gaines, Joseline Tina Melnick, Carlos Sanchez, Carolyn J.B. Howard. And their staff is Peggy Callahan. Okay, not seeing anybody else at the microphone, I will put the question before you. <laughs> All of you. Oh, I'm sorry, come forward then. All right, obviously, I was there for the amateur. I do have um, a question. Part of it you already answered because I wanted to know if there's another bill in place too, if we repeal this, if something's in place. But also I have a question. Um, is there verbiage in the new bill that will have some clarity around the stability of holding a superintendent? Because if we repeal this bill, they get rid of him. We already know that we've had problems with stability with superintendents even since I've been here. So it's just um, something to consider. You want? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Thank you. Um, so the purpose of this bill is is just to return to a democratic process. And so if the people of Prince George's County, if the constituents of Prince George's County want to keep our CEO, then he'll be voted back in. It's about democracy. It's about reflecting um, a system that where where leaders are accountable to the people that they serve. And currently that's not happening. Yeah. So we're not necessarily saying that this repeal means removal. It means that the decision goes back to the people of Prince George's County. I just want to say that um, based on what I'm hearing in Annapolis, um, those are some of the questions that are being asked by the legislators. Um, and the issue becomes one of is it, a, is it a full repeal? And this is what we're asking for because we've got to start from somewhere. So if they're gonna, if we get the full repeal and if there's some other fine tuning that needs to be done in negotiations, um, like I said, legislation is like sausage being made. So you don't always know what's gonna come out, but 
um, one thing um, we need to make sure is that um, nobody gets to be a cowboy. Okay, seeing nobody else at the microphone, I put the question before you. Shall we support, do um, you have the numbers for um, Carolyn Howard's legislation in front of you? I'm sorry. No, 1107 is the old bill, but the new pieces of legislation are, are specific, and I want to make sure I say them right for the record. Okay. No, but where's the actual bill number? Okay, well, Section 3-102 of the Education Article, um, HB, which would repeal HB 1107 and uh, dated 2013, and I will get the exact um, bill numbers and make sure that they're um, inserted into the minutes. So, all in favor of the repeal, hold your quick, you got a point of information, ma'am? Uh, I don't know. We have to ask the NECC. Do we have quorum? No. We had 56 and the people have left, so. Okay. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Um, then I can't put that question before you, but I can call a special, I do have to have a special meeting with the board of directors after we finish business today. So um, I, I will put it in the hands of the board of directors only because time is limited because we have the breakfast on Saturday and we need to have that, um, we need to have that legislation. The board of directors has the, the authority to make that decision. But can I just get a show of hands so that, I, so that we can feel what you would like um, all in favor of the repeal, raise your hands. All opposed? Okay, so it's the board, board director sees the sentiment of the people gathered. Okay, so um, membership, Yvonne Basich, did you have something? Are you good? No. Minority Affairs, Annette Jones, can you give us a report on your wonderful event you had that I attended, please? Or do you have a report in the back? No. Okay. okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Good evening, questions. everyone. Annette Jones, um, Carwood Elementary. We want to say thank you for each and every one who came out to our MLK Art and Essay Awards program. From the feedback we got, it was a fantastic um, program. We had standing room only at Kingsford Elementary. We had the element Kingsford Choir um, performing and the awardees were just excellent. It was great. And we thank you. In addition, it was you who made it so fantastic because you encourage your students to participate. And we had some excellent artwork and we also had some outstanding essays. And we thank you for that um, participation. Um, your input, and thank you, Madam President, for the enormous support you gave to us. No problem. Um, so, what's next on our agenda is Taste of Diversity, which is, we will, we are moving it on the request and suggestion from our president. We move it, shifting it from the end of the school year in May to, to the, February. So when you come next, um, you will be, we will be celebrating the cases that we have in Prince George's County. And most of you are always accustomed to it, so we will have that going at our next rep meeting. That's the time we will be celebrating. So we urge you to come out a little bit earlier so that you can get your meal and get settled so that our president can start to conduct business Exactly 440. Please help us to do that. Thank we'll you. Send out notification. Yeah. Thank you. Um, NECC? Yes. 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 You have some results for us and an uh, update on the All right. Um, I'm not that tall. Um, <laughs> okay. So. Next month, and 
our board meeting, uh, I mean in our rep council meeting, um, we will have candidate speeches for board of directors and also for the treasurer. If I call your name and you're here, could you please come to the front so everyone can um, see you, so you'll be visible. Running for board of directors, Donna Christie, Michelle Clark, Deidre Daniels, Annette Jones, Mark King, Amity Pope, Delicia Vance, Suzanne Windsor, Laura Lanasa, and Eli Chichemny. These are your candidates for board of directors. Y'all all pull in so they can get a picture of you for your face. So we can. <laughs> Thank you, Clinton. Um, running for re-election for, tre for treasurer is Tawana Lane. She is not here this evening. Um, the candidates need to be prepared to give a three-minute speech on February 26th. All speeches will be posted online within five days. Voting begins March 6th and ends March 17th. If you have any questions, you can see one of us out in the hallway. Oh, I'm sorry, microphone one. It's not working. But, oh, okay. it is. Point of information, right, insurance board of directors. Is uh, Ms. Lane running unopposed? Yes. Are we then uh, yes. to the chair, to the parliamentarian, to the chair, are we allowed then to vote for her? Uh, is it by acclamation? Um, what's the word? It has to be on the ballot, yes. Because you can have write-ins as well. Okay, okay. okay. Just making sure. You gotta get the results. Do you have the results from the ratification? Okay, the contract passed. We, the exact numbers were sent out to you, I believe, and it was on the website. Oh, yeah, that. Yes, it passed. <laughs> um, overwhelmingly. There were a few people that abstained, but it did pass overwhelmingly. Okay. And we have already begun. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, yes. Yeah. I have a question somewhere? Okay. So. Where am I? Social committee. elementary school and I'm the social committee chair and we do more than pate I just want to let you know that we have our February a forever fit conference February 4th 2017 at 1 p.m. we want to have security benefits they want to have a display fitness demonstrations food tasting retirement information blood pressure screening Derma view screening, giveaways, Zumba, aerobics, lots of fun. All are invited. Also, we want to have tutoring. Well, this is something separate. We want to have tutoring. Remember years ago, we would have tutoring. PGCA, we had a, a database of all tutors. So that's something else that the social committee is doing. Educators who tutor, they're gonna have a Google Doc to complete. We are just providing the tools, the calls and meeting locations up to the tutor and the client. So that's something totally separate. But social committee, we're set for February the 4th. There are plenty of flyers in the back. Take them back to your school. We also wanna do the biggest loser. So anybody wants to lose any weight, 
come on out. We have a scale for you to get measured, and then another scale for you when you come back. You know, we'll we'll delete it, you know, about five pounds. We'll take away <laughs> five, ten pounds, all depends. <laughs> but um, come on out, because that's going to have lots of fun. The um, Biggest Loser competition will be, um, I know some of you signed up for it last year. I just ran out of daylight mm -hmm. and trying to get it off the ground. But with the fitness fair, it was a great fit. So we're gonna have an information session on um, February the 4th at one o'clock. So come on out if you're interested in the, um, the, being in the competition. I am gonna enter it, but I'm not gonna win. <laughs> I, I'm not no, she's going to be competitive. I'm going to be competitive. I, I, I need to lose a few pounds, but I, I will not be one of the candidates. I'll just be working out with you. I have worked out um, some special um, uh, membership packages for us at the Sports and Learning Center. And um, we're going to have, those of you who are in the competition, you will have um, the access to the trainers at the Sports and Learning Center. And Roddy McElwain, um, who is the um, center director, is going to be working with us to make sure that we have whatever trainers we need. Um, the other thing I wanted to add, which I just came from a medical benefits meeting. I've been in meetings for the past couple of weeks. Um, because they're doing our medical um, plan. Um, the, um, there was $50,000 that Care First gave Prince George's County Public Schools for on-site member workshops. So if you wanna do a Zumba class at your school and you can get 30 people to do a Zumba class, the, the Blue Care First will pay for it. All we have to do is have the 30 people in request it. So I got 30 people in here that we could do a Zumba class right here. So I just wanted you to know that that was available and I just found out about it myself going through this process. So look forward to us doing more activities and concert with them over the next couple of months because they'll pay for um, the $1,500 to have eight sessions of Zumba here. So, um, I just wanted to let you know that. I'm and we also have somebody doing body wraps. Who does body wraps and they have their information. So come on. Body wraps. It sounds good with right. it is. It's a cleansing. Cleansing. Oh, I want all that. Yeah, they take the ram wrap and wrap it all around. <laughs> okay. Um, PDL Read Across America. You got a report for us? Go ahead. Rainia Miller. Rainia Miller, PDL Committee, and Read Across America. Um, we have a new teacher T coming up the middle of February. We're thinking around the 15th. And we're having a SLO closeout. So for all of you who want to get a little bit of direction with closing out those SLOs, we will be doing that, I want to say, February the 9th. And then we have another one later in the month after the new teacher tea. So check your emails. Those will be coming out to you. Uh, don't forget, Read Across America, we will be signing people up on Saturday. So if you want some readers in your building, you should probably let us know. Uh, maybe we'll make a list for Read Across America so we can get some uh, readers to your schools. And I think that is it. We've had lots of turnout. Looking forward to it. We're going to have a spring conference coming up for you educational leaders. And uh, that is our report. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Antoine is not here. Um, the, where is that pretty girl at? Zena? Oh, you say, okay. You can hide them in the front. You want to talk about some of the things that you're looking for then you need for your PR committee? Okay, uh, good evening everyone. Top, top, top. Um, we've been working very hard to make PTCA more visible in the organization and in the community. So one of the efforts that we've been trying to do is schools without representation to get representation. So tonight in the building we actually have Ladies for High School that is in the house tonight. Um, they came to our meet and greet 
and they spoke with the president and they are forming a FAC and trying to get more involved with what uh, with PGCA CA and what PGCA is doing. On the other front, besides trying to get schools without representation, representation, um, we've been working with Costco to um, to have a Costco night at Costco in Woodmore. So stay tuned for that very soon. Um, if you don't have, we're working on the what happens if you already have a membership. So we're working out deals for you all. Those memberships are ready to. We're still big on that part out, but stay tuned for that. Also, we're trying to get with. Red Cross, the American Red Cross, to get teachers and staff members um, certified in CPR and the basic fundamentals. So that is in the works as well. Um, in addition to, of course, anything that PGCA is doing, we're trying to, um, you know, bring the message out and communicate so we can have a more visible presence. You know, for the amount of we have 10,000 members, and you know, we should have at least. Remember, it's ratio of one to 25, so trying to get more representation so we can be seen and we can be the force that we are. Can I miss anything? No. And come out like us on Facebook. Yeah, and um, stay tuned for more PR socials and definitely come out for the fit. Yeah. Like us on Facebook. We put a lot of information on Facebook. If you haven't liked our Facebook, um, we're, we're pushing a lot of information out there. We're, um, as far as PR is concerned, um, over the next couple of months, or next month or so, our website is going to be getting upgraded to a format that will optimize for your PDA, um, and the app will be in play. I'm working on it, Donna. Please, Lord Jesus, no, I'm working on it. Um, <clears throat> um, but like us on Facebook, um, and our website, Special education, Sheena, did you have a report? Just so I can click through this while she's walking. Um, restorative practices, Robin McNair has put her report on the back. Is that correct, Robin? And um, yes, ma'am. Okay, so Sheena Washington, special education chair. Um, I just wanted to first report that um, last week uh, I attended the ESSA listening tour, and the room that I was in, there were, I think we took over in terms of the special educators and the parent advocates that were there just talking about special ed um, and issues with the state in terms of testing and not differentiating between students with disabilities and, and, and the test in general. And so I just want to reiterate, if you weren't able to go to attend those listening sessions, that's fine. What's really important is that you take the time to fill out the survey um, that MSDA has provided, and hopefully we can get that link posted on our website. Um, but it is really important that they hear from um, teachers in terms of you know, what type of accountability we need, what works for our kids, um, restorative practices, funding that we need for our schools and our classrooms. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about tonight, and I'd like to see a show of hands, how many people plan on attending the budget hearing tomorrow at the Board of Ed. Okay, that's tomorrow evening. So let me um, just share an email that I received from um, one of the Board of Ed members, Edward Burroughs. Uh, last night, uh, January 20th, the Board of Education voted to give the CEO's executive cabinet a raise. We have the largest executive team in the entire region, that's 33 right now. Um, some of the members of the cabinet have received 30% raises in the last two years, while our teachers, principals, and support staff have not yet received their fair shame, their, their fair share, and this is a shame. So I saw two hands that were raised. That's not nearly enough. This budget proposal affects what we can do in our classrooms. And we all know that we did not get a 30% raise, and we haven't received a 30% raise over the last few years, anywhere near that, but we're working with these students. I'm up here advocating for special ed, but I'm advocating for teachers, right? The special ed budget hasn't changed significantly in the last five years. So with zero increase in our fundings and an increase in demands, right? Different policies change every year. We're, we're supposed to be providing services in the co-taught setting, but we have no money for trainings and for more teachers and for more services for our kids. 
We need more than two hands raised for these budget meetings tomorrow. So I hope that we have more people that come out and, and, and voice your concerns. A 30% raise for executive leadership. Ms. Ms. Washington, I just, um, some of the um, information that was disseminated at that meeting, mm -hmm. um, as far as the 30% raises for some of those staff people, um, um, there was a, a whole other level of conversation that went on about that. And I'm not trying to justify anybody getting a 30% raise, but the, the, some of the people who received raises were people who were promoted from other positions into the executive cabinet. Now, we can say that they're making way too much money, and I have no problem with that, but one of the things that I do want to make sure is that I have all of that information because the, the other piece to that vote was that the cabinet members received the same 2% raise that we received. So the school system is actually doing a study right now, or uh, there's a study being done that compares our um, executive cabinet and size to see if it's proportional to what surrounding jurisdictions have. Now, it may be that we do have that, and if that's the case, then even um, the people who were um, on the board who were raising these concerns about the pay raise for, the, um, for some of the executive staff, they all were asking for this information to be presented, and it wasn't presented. presented. So what I'm gonna um, ask that um, uh, Ms. Washington follow that piece for me and see where it is that they are, where this study is going and who's doing it and when are we gonna get that data? Because I need this information when we go into um, interest-based bargaining and where is Cheryl? And it was a great segue to Cheryl. Ms. Washington, are you complete? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to um, reiterate that um, I hope that we see a lot more teachers out for these board meetings um, speaking about our budget and the needs for our classroom. So there is a meeting that's going to be tomorrow, January 24th, January 31st, and February 7th. Uh, and then the budget should be approved on February 23rd. Uh, our next special education committee meeting will be February 21st. We meet on the third Tuesdays. So if anybody has any questions, any concerns, you want to sign up for our committee and get updates, please let me know. We're also on Facebook. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Question? I've never gotten up here to speak before you guys before, so forgive me if I'm speaking out. Can you talk right into the mic? There you go. There you go. Um, I, I seem to remember earlier in the fall um, the union offering some support for teachers who wanted to go speak and some guidance on what to say. Could you refresh our memories on that, please? The um, talking points for the budget are, have, are on the website um, and the issues that we have concern, concerns about. Did you want to add something else to that? Yeah, I, I know that the special ed committee um, held uh, one session, one work session where we sat and we, we created talking points. Um, we can certainly have more of those. Is that something that you think would be beneficial? We are going to redo the ES. We, we were supposed to go to NEA in on the 17th of December and have the ESSA training at NEA, and that was supposed to be part of that training that was going to include how we walk through the budget process and uh, ESS, ESSA. I believe in the back of the room, there is a packet right now on the budget process and when the hearings are. And I, I do know that I, that I personally posted it, like all the hearings that are coming up, I posted it on the Facebook. Um, we are having some technical issues with the um, website right now. And like I said, we're in the process of um, moving it over. As soon as we have the um, budget um, sessions, there are two couple of budget sessions coming up, but we are gonna have a, um, a training within the with, um, early February, okay? Thank you. All right. Microphone one, did you have a question? 
Yes, um, Dave Reynolds, Robert Goddard, Montessori. I have a question about the format of the hearings. Will there be public um, opportunity to speak like there are at the regular board meetings or is it just going to be back and forth between the board or is it just going to be the board presenting their BS and we get to listen to it and no input? Can you give me a rundown on the format please? Just an overview? Well, there's. There's two ways you can appear on the agenda. One is if you sign up to speak to an agenda item, and the other is if you sign up to speak to a non-agenda item. So if you want to speak about the budget, then you need to specifically say, I wish to speak about the budget as an agenda item. So that's the, that's the format. And they have been allowing um, the public testimony to come before all of the other things so you don't have to stay there so long. That's the format for the regular board meeting. Will it be the same as one for the hearings? The budget hearings? Yes, one of uh, Ms. Washington spoke about The tomorrow. one tomorrow? I, be I believe it's the same because I signed up to speak and I didn't do anything different to sign up. I can maybe help with that. Okay. And I can also help answer the question that the, um, the rep person had before. Um, we segue into our negotiations report, if that's okay, because that can answer some. Uh, there are uh, budget hearings that are scheduled. There are a document in the back that uh, shares with you what the dates are of the budget hearings and the time. There is first, uh, it should say, Prince George's County Public Schools FY 2018 operating budget schedule. You guys got that? It's in the back, it's on the back table. Please get that if you don't have it. Um, tonight there is a learn about the budget session at Ernest uh, Just Middle School. We just found, I just found out about that one. That's at 6.30, so I'm gonna to try to go to that one myself. All right, so let me give you the negotiations report and then answer these questions in the, in the crux of it. In the back table, there is a document that is marked confidential, and it says PGCA negotiations team and support job descriptions. Did everyone pick one up? Okay, so actually, we have, and when I say we, I, I want to thank my UNICERF team and some of our other activists have identif identified um, educators, um, emerging leaders who fit the description that we've been looking for in regards to forming our negotiations process for this year. So actually about 30 of your colleagues were identified and of those 30, we have funneled them down in regards to a three-tier process in regards to contract negotiations. So the first tier is the nucleus, which is the main people who will be attending all of the sessions and actually negotiating under the interest-based bargaining process. We had a training already last week that included both our people and the, the members of the Board of Ed's team. All of the Board of Ed's team was and a facilitator from the Federal Mediation Conciliation Service. He is our facilitator for, for IBB interest-based bargaining. Because all of the Board of Ed's team was not able to go, um, he made sure that they set up a training. They have set up a training for, so that they will also be trained beginning part of February. So what we have already in the mix uh, where we're, we're moving towards beginning negotiations. We already have our group that we will be using in terms of our nucleus. We also have identified and others have self-identified to help us in the tier two, which are the people who will be dealing with the specific issues. We shared with you at a prior meeting what some of those issues were. So because this is a confidential document, I didn't put that in for this time, but the list that we had on PowerPoint before that we sent out in terms of IBB issues are the issues we're also going to be addressing. So we're already moving and kicking it with that. Um, if you look at the tier, if you look at the sheet that talks about tier two, we have time commitments that are going to be in place and there's some processes that they're going to use to solicit more information from you about your various interests. And in addition to that, if you look under compensation, we have information about analyzing salary scales and about the budget. There is a document in the back, provided also a document last meeting, will provide more information about these budget hearings. It is very important that we attend these budget hearings. 
even if we're not there to testify, because there really has not been yet a formalized message to present to you to speak to. We're not really asking you for the meeting tomorrow to speak to an issue. We're just asking people to show up and so that the room is filled of educators, just as Sheena just spoke about what happened at the meeting last, was it last week? Where we, will, we, can, we can definitely make our presence known by being there, paying attention to who is speaking, who is speaking for our um, issues, who is not, and to observe how the Board of Ed are reacting to the testimony. Those are the tentacles that we need from you to give us feedback on how to be successful at negotiations. So we're at the, this moment in time, we haven't yet put together what the message is going to be for you to speak. So we're not, I'm not, and the team is not asking you to speak on a particular issue. Because you will have opportunity throughout the budget process that will go from now until April slash May to provide input as needed based on how our tiers are operating with that. So we also then have our tier three, which um, is going to focus on how we provide unity to negotiations and mobilize our members. So that's where you see in terms of tier three. Now, we haven't identified everybody yet in the tiers two or the tiers three, so if anyone is interested, particularly in tier three, which is the mobilizing piece of it, please share your names with us. I already received some names tonight. The actual names of our team members will first be presented to the board of directors because we decided and agreed on that process that the board of directors would get to um, get first the names of the, who the actual team people are, and that's all three tiers. But this is going to be a three-tier process, but it's going to be very important that, we, again, people show up. So um, in reference to how you, how you actively participate without having to speak, the work sessions, if you look at the sheet in your hand, is to come, take notes, observe, and give us your feedback as to what you saw, what you heard, what support, what you felt was supported, and what you felt was problematic. That's the only way we're going to be able to determine how successful we are as we move forward. The 7 o'clock meetings are public hearings. So those are meetings where you sign up in advance to speak. We are saying um, if you want to speak on behalf of your school, if you represent your school, make sure your building level administrator knows that's what you're doing. We are not really asking you tonight to speak yet at the hearing because as the, the, the young lady stated, we do have um, our vision statements, but we don't really have our talking points. You will have an opportunity in writing by email, um, to by petition, if that's what we decide to do, to communicate to the board through this entire budget process. And as you can see, the board adopts its budget, uh, let's see, um, in the February. So we have the time to actually mobilize and to have you do those things. So that's what we are asking. But as Ms. Washington said, we need people to show up. And that's going to be important. I need a motion to extend the meeting to finish the rest of the agenda and to hear um, petitions and comments. And the, the motion has been moved to extend to Finish the agenda and member petitions and comments. All in favor, raise your hands. All opposed, it was seconded by Virginia McLaughlin. All opposed, extensions, okay, so we'll finish up. I, did, I, I didn't want to interrupt you no, while you were speaking. Actually, I'm done unless okay. there are questions. I do want to make sure that we you uh, take a look also at the summary sheet that's attached to that document because I know I'm not going to say I know. I'm going to say I encourage you to at least read the summaries that are there because so many of us have never even taken the time to take a look at the budget other than what the fixed charges are or what the salaries are. And in order for us to be very, very um, credible in dealing with the budget, we need to know how the budget works and how it affects what we do as educators and the learning of students. So I at least want to employ you to read the summary statement. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Okay, so um, <clears throat> the president's report, I will email that to you, I'm gonna email it to all the building reps, but there's a couple things, I, the written report. Um, the one thing I do want to say to you is that I, I have been working on the negotiations for our medical benefits. We are trying to get the um, RFP technical portion of it, which means I've been reading manuals this high on medical benefits and learning a lot about co-pays and um, there's just so much that is involved in it. And so it has been just consuming a lot of time, but it's important time well spent. Um, the information that I have received from members about things like hearing aids, of like things about why are they giving me um, a generic that's making me sick as opposed to giving me the formulary? Um, what, is, what is it gonna look like as far as customer service is concerned? If, if we're gonna have 24 hour service, all of those types of things um, are in the technical evaluations. So we are doing the tech, we should be done with the technical evaluations um, by the end of the month. Um, we, um, yesterday, tomorrow, today, tomorrow, and a couple of days next week, we're interviewing all of the medical providers. Um, so that's really our chance for me to ask really important questions about um, our medical benefits, um, dental, dental benefits, and the service, services that we receive. Um, the other thing is I want to announce um, that we have hired, and I think I mentioned it at our last meeting in November. Nope, I didn't have it done yet. We, um, we have hired a new executive director, and her name is Jennifer Epps, and she will be at our February Rep Council. Um, she will begin March the 1st, and she was unanimously selected by the endorsement committee before I even voted. So I'm really excited about her coming on. She's a fireball of energy and an organizer, and that's what we need as our, for our executive director. I also um, would um, like to say that um, we are fully staffed with Uniserves, and we now have someone on the phones in the, uh, helping support the Uniserve staff and also at the front desk. Um, if there are issues where you try to reach somebody live and breathing at PGCEA, give me, we're, we're meeting with the phone company on Wednesday because we're gonna get it together and get it right. We have people answering the phones now, but there were a few glitches that we're working out. So we are making sure that that's done because it's important. I do wanna say one thing. If a member gets in trouble, in your building. Um, one of the things that I'm getting a lot of phone calls is people are offering up a, a statement before um, they have spoken to a Uniserv um, and giving written statements. You should have a, they should have a Uniserv review their statement before they turn it in. And the reason is because you might write on your report, well, I did grab that boy when you meant to say, I didn't grab that boy. And it's a matter of a knot that can get you in a whole lot of trouble. So you always wanna make sure that you have a second set of eyes looking at what you turn in. So um, where did Cheryl go? Did she leave? She went to the hearing. But there's a, a paper that we're going that she's put together and I will make sure that you get it, um, that all the building reps get it on what people should do if there is an, in, if there is an incident in your building. Um, the other piece that I want to share with you is that um, at one of our schools, we had an issue with um, uh, an administrator that was creating a hostile environment. And the response that I got from the school system was, well, have you filled out the 4170 hostile environment bullying form? And if there were, were this many problems, then perhaps that form should have been filled out. Fill out the form. If your principal's coming over the PA system yelling at people, if they're being ridiculous, 
And you have the right to fill out that form, just like a kid who's being bullied has the right to fill out that form. So if that's the way that you're feeling, feeling, fill out the form. That's what I need you to do. And if enough people start filling out these forms, then when they come, when they come to me and say, well, why are people filling out these forms? I can look at them and say, well, why aren't you doing something about the culture and how our teachers are being treated? So I need that documentation. Um, and um, I had one woman that called me, she was so upset, and I said, fill out the form. She said, well, I'm afraid. I said, well, look, if you don't fill out that form, you're gonna stay afraid. Mm -hmm. So you have to stand up for yourself. If they retaliate, then you call 301-237-2822. That's my cell phone number. I'm just saying. 301-736-2700. I answer the phone if I'm not in a meeting, I send you a meeting and call me from my, cause you call me from your cell phone. Don't call me from the school phone. Cause if you call me from the school phone and I'm in a meeting and I respond to you with a text, you're not gonna get my text back. It's gonna bounce back to me and say, this is a landline number. I can't do that. So call me from your cell phone if there's a problem. I answer the phone. Our Uniserves answer the phone. The form 4170, all you got to do is go to PGCA and search 4170. Procedure 4170. Okay? Um, some of our members are going to... Um, where are you guys going? Tampa, Florida, for the uh, Minority Summit. We, I, um, there were a couple of people, um, Arun Parakin um, is representing our younger educators. Um, he was an MSEA person, I believe. Um, Zena Whitworth, our public relations person is going, and Robin McNair are also going um, to get trained on some of the NEA um, protocols and procedures. Um, I cannot tell you how important this um, interest-based bargaining is for us and that I want y'all to be attentive to it. Cheryl's working really hard on it and this is our way to change working conditions and our goal is to have our contract negotiated and ready for you guys to vote on before May because if we can what we've got to do is make sure we get our contract negotiated before the budget is finalized because once they finalize that budget at the end of May and the beginning of June, and they reconcile the budget, if they say, well, we don't have the money to pay you, then it, th no arbitrator is gonna give us the money. We've gotta get our contract done ahead of time so that we can be on time and make sure that we hold them accountable for what they pay them, and if we have to go to arbitration over the budget, arbitration wasn't an option for us this time, okay?